Welcome back to Studio One here in New York City. Maria Taylor alongside Paul Pierce, Jalen Rose, and Jay Will. Right now, the Lakers are up 14 on the Heat in Game 1. And LeBron and AD continuing on from their first game. They both had at least 25, 5, and 5 in Game 1. Defensively, the Miami Heat are showing zero resistance. And the Lakers are taking advantage of it with their height, their passing, and just their overall skill. You see LeBron James continue to attack the paint, kicks it over to AD for the easy dunk. Same thing returns to favor. AD, two hands hanging on the rim. Those two guys understand that they have the opportunity to go ahead and continue to dominate this series, and they're doing it in the first half. Miami only made six threes. Like they're going to probably make around 20 to actually have a chance to win this game. Mm -hmm. And then I, you got to give Maestro a lot of credit. Rajon Rondo, nine points, four assists. Just makes the game easy for everybody, with the exception of when LeBron James can do it as well. Yeah, I, I like Jimmy Butler. He has 11 points. He's leading them in points, rebounds, and assists. But I think he needs to be a little more aggressive. He has to have one of those special nights if they're going to have a chance to win tonight. Mm, I keep talking about the special night was game one against the Bucks. He dropped 40. What will we have in the second half for the Heat? if they expect to stay in this one. This halftime report is presented by Oculus. And welcome to the Seaport District at Pier 17, brought to you by Heineken. Maria Taylor alongside Adrian Wojnarowski. We've got Uncle P, Paul Pierce, still wearing his championship ring. we got Jalen Rose coming in crispy for a Friday. What up, and Jay Williams wearing his turtleneck, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's back turtleneck season. <laughs> this fall. It, we're just excited it's not July and you're wearing it. So welcome exactly. to October. It's that means that we are in game two of the NBA Finals. And to, to get this thing started, guys, let's talk about the Kia keys to the game. And for the Heat, they're going to have to find a way to stop Anthony Davis. He dominated in game one, especially when he was playing center. The Lakers outscored Miami by 25 points when Davis was on the floor without Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee. So the question is, what can the Heat do to actually slow him down? They got to contest his shots. Davis shot just two for 12 in game one when Miami contested, but was a perfect nine for nine when he was left wide open. And what's at stake tonight? The Heat can't afford to go down 2-0 as LeBron James is a perfect 23 when taking a 2-0 lead in a best-of-seven series. That is the most wins without a loss by any player in NBA postseason history. Um, but it's going to be tough for the Heat because, as you guys know, they're battling injuries. Bam Adebayo and also Goran Dragic. What is the latest with their injury updates, Woj? Uh, Maria, both Adebayo and Goran Dragic will be out for Game 2 tonight. I'm told that both are hopeful that they may be able to return on Sunday for a game three, you'll see Myers Leonard and the rookie sensation Tyler Hero now in that starting lineup for the Heat. And without Dragic and Adebayo on the court, you lose 50% of the scoring and assists uh, that Miami's had in this entire postseason. And as you mentioned, in trying to stop Anthony Davis, you know, Bam Adebayo, one of the best defenders in the league. He was a second team all league um, defensive team uh, player this season. Uh, that left shoulder and his neck, he's having trouble with his range of motion, even being able to lift that left arm. And so uh, they're hopeful that they can get them back by Sunday. But it is a tall order for Miami tonight without those two players against this Lakers team. And the one place that they didn't have depth was that center. So losing Bam, obviously, is huge. So what does it mean for the Heat? Well, I love boxing so much that I bought places in Vegas so I could go watch Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather fight. And I've been to a ton of their fights. But they never were in the ring at the same time. Why? They're in different weight classes. That's what I think about these two teams. Look no further than the point guard of the Lakers, LeBron James. He's six foot nine. Yeah. 250 pounds. He's the same size as the center of the Miami Heat. He's <laughs> six foot nine, 255 pounds. Plus he has Dwight Howard. Yep. And he has Anthony Davis to play with as well. So based on the fact that the Lakers have the talent, most talented players in the game, plus they have the size and the physicality, I think the Heat are just out of their weight class. Look, the, the Heat made 11, I mean, the Lakers made 11 threes in the first half. They shot 65%. That opened up the middle of the zone. That's when AD and LeBron started working. I, I don't think you're going to see the Miami Heat abandon playing zone. They just have to be way more active in that zone. Now, Myers Leonard is going to give a different challenge to AD. Bigger, stronger, not as agile as Bam Adebayo, but still, you have to keep them out of the paint and you have to limit three-point shots. I don't think they're going to sustain shooting 65% from the three-point line. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that he can do. I mean, I, even when healthy, went down, they still couldn't control Anthony Davis, LeBron James. Unless they go out here and make a record-setting performance from three, 
like I said in day one, this is going to be a sweep. Uh, it's just a total mismatch, like Jalen said. And uh, it, it just got worse losing two starters and key players. Thank you guys so much for giving South Beach so much hope right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're so excited to hear all of these things. Um, they but had a great season. Great they should be happy getting there. All, all I'm saying is Duncan Robinson can't take three shots, mm -hmm. right? Um, he has to find ways to get going. Tyler Hero, the moment looked really too big for him last game. He needs to settle into the game. And Kendrick Nunn, like he was second place in Rookie of the Year voting for this team. He did put in work in that game. Yeah, they just need a huge performance from everybody on their team. Yeah, Duncan Robinson had zero points in game one. Okay, so if we're having the perimeter, having to find ways to play, do you think they can shoot from the three whatever they need against the Lakers? Well, here's what the Miami Heat are going to need if they're going to win tonight. They're going to need Jimmy Butler to play like AI in 2001. Uh, put up one of those types of numbers, one of those vintage plays where you see AI stepping over Ty Lue. It's going to have to be that kind of game for the Miami Heat to win. I agree with you. Yeah. Kendrick Nunn is going to give him quality minutes and he, he can be a wild card. I just don't think they have enough power and size up front. Okay, well we know that Jimmy Butler's capable of it in game one against the Bucks. He did have 40 points. on side if that works. Okay, then we will start off with Jason Miniman. Jason, you Brian, you guys went on, um, I think, a 75-30 to 30 run after falling down 13 early. What allows uh, you guys to have success like that over a sustained period of time, uh, a run like that? To pay attention to detail. Um, I don't I'm physical enough. Um, and you actually, you, you have to get a feel for how hard Miami plays. Um, and I think, um, you know, they smacked us in the mouth. And we got a sense of that. And so we knew how hard we had to play if we wanted to try to make it a game. And, um, you know, from that moment when it was 23-10, we started to play um, to our capabilities. We started flying around. We started getting defensive stops in. We started sharing the ball a, bit, uh, a lot better offensively and just got into a really good groove. All right, Kyle Dillon. Um, for AD, thank you. For AD, obviously his first finals game, what did you see about, about his preparation? Was there any advice you gave him? And, and to see him perform like that, um, what, what do you feel about that? Um, I don't feel anything. I expect it out of him. Um, didn't need to give him no advice. Uh, we've been preparing for this moment all season. He's been preparing for this moment all season. And I'm happy to be on the same floor with him in the same uniform. And uh, um, he was, a, once again, a, a force. Um, every facet of the game, both offensively and defensively. Dan? LeBron, you've, you've felt the buzz of the NBA Finals nine times in your career. What was it like today with nobody there, the sound? I mean, I know you're used to bubble basketball at this point, but on this stage, what did it feel like to play a Finals game? It felt great. It felt great. I've been preparing for this moment for quite a while. Um, and fans, no fans, um, the, the inner challenge for myself and the way I prepared myself, it felt amazing to be playing in the finals once again. Okay, Brian, you've seen plenty of times over the years where if one team has a bunch of injuries, the other team kind of floats a little bit and doesn't come at them as hard. How do you make sure that you guys don't do that in game two? We got so much more work to do. Um, <clears throat> the job is not done, and we're not satisfied with winning one game. Is that simple? All right, Chris. Thanks. Bron, there was a few times where you guys got up big, and then um, there was a lot of celebrating going on. And you know, I seen you sometimes you you had to rein them in a little bit. What what do you um? From your experience, what have you seen in the past that, that that got you to the point where you felt like sometimes you just say like, okay, let's let's keep it on task? Now, the best teacher in life is experience, and I've experienced moments in my career, um, finals games, where you had all the momentum in the world and you felt like you had the game under control, and one play here or one play there uh, could change the course of a series or change the course of a game. And um, one in particular that always rings home for me um, is game two of the 2011 finals in Miami versus Dallas. Um, D. Wade hits a three right by that bench. Uh, I believe put us up either 13 or 17. 
And from that moment on, Dallas went on a hell of a run and finished it off with a Dirk and Whiskey left hand layup to, to steal that game. That shit burns me to this day.